What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Sweet Beat TV. It's your hosts, Alex and Taylor, Hello. and we have a super fun show for you today. We do. Let's set ourselves. Let's set ourselves up for success. Why don't we? That's right. Any Dance Moms fans out there? We have Gia Nina on the show today. Taylor caught up with her about okay. all things Dance Moms and yes. so much more. Right? Yeah, and you definitely want to stick around for it because guess what? The next episode's on tonight. So that's right. Want a little sneak peek of what happens? Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> also, the very adorable and talented Quinn Lewis was hanging out with Caitlin mm -hmm. in studio to talk about his new single, Hurt Me Now. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But first up, we have to talk about what's happening, Taylor. <laughs> There's a lot happening. <laughs> So as you all know, the Teen Choice Awards came to Hermosa Beach this past weekend, right? About time. Yeah. If I never had to walk one more red carpet on the asphalt <laughs> in the sun, your girl would be happy. You're telling me that one was on the beach? It was on the pier. I mean, there were <laughs> giant beach balls, a blow up oh. lifeguard shack, and crashing waves made of multicolored bu bubbles. Talk about a good time, right? Yeah, because you know what happens on beaches with bubbles? What? Surfers with surfboards. That's right. As well as Teen Choice Sports. <laughs> I mean, the show was amazing. Yes. Hosted, of course, by Pretty Little Liars, Lucy Hale, yes. and YouTube personality David Dobrik. He's hilarious. I bet And he, I love her also. Right. No, they're both great. And they made a great duo. And I would be fine if David Dobrik wanted to host has more things. Yeah. I mean, I could do some time off. Do you want him to come right here? <laughs> Actually, Thursday's episode will feature David Dobrik instead of Taylor, right? Don't tell people that now because they're going to get so mad when <laughs> I show up here on Thursday. And I don't even know if people are happy enough. Oh as my gosh. Just kidding. Anyways, yeah. And we have to talk about some of the highlights, of course. Uh, our favorite boy. Uh, I got a lot of them. I know. <laughs> Noah, Noah Centineo. Centineo. One yes. choice movie actor for The choice, Perfect Date. Yeah, choice comedy movie actor. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And also, who better to win it alongside than Laura Marano since they were in the same film together on Netflix. She yeah. won Choice Comedy Actress. So I really enjoyed that movie myself. I know. It was a great movie. Yeah. And if you didn't catch our sit-down interview with them, I did that junket. And they're actually really funny together, just kind of like in interview form and offset. So this award was well-deserved. It was, definitely. And then, of course, the Teen Choice Icon Award was yes. won by none other than Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. Yes, uh, Taylor Swift really having a year this year. 2019, year of Taylor Swift. She just graced the Vogue September cover. Now she's winning the inaugural Icon Award. And she's 29 years old only. That's I mean, so crazy. And of course she took the time in her acceptance speech to honor the U.S. women's soccer team yes. and talk about none other than... Yeah, she brought up, you know, she's always been fighting this whole gender pay gap and I just love that she used the platform when she gets it to continue the fight and who better to do it alongside than the women's, U.S. women's soccer team right, right now. I mean, I didn't think you could build a better team but you got now the Swifties and the U.S. women's soccer team. I mean... Girl power at its finest. Yeah, you don't want to be opposing any of that on the other side of it. So no. good for her. And, and she then, also, yeah, and the most exciting part, she announced her new single, Lover. Yeah, this Friday, Taylor will be releasing Lover, which is also the title of her upcoming album. So I'm yeah. excited to hear that song. It's going to be a good one. You always want to hear the song in which they're titling the album. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So I'll be here waiting for it. Friday. Yeah. Friday. And then the uh, award that we spoke about we earlier did. this month, Choice Music Web Star, which Annie LeBlanc and Asher Angel, couple of the year, were against each other. And but guess who took it home? An ex-lover, since we're staying on the topic of lovers right now. Hayden Summerall was in the same category. You also, I think, had Johnny Orlando in that category. So a lot of them being friends in that circle. But of course, who took it home? I don't know if we called this or not, but Annie LeBlanc. Annie took LeBlanc it home. took it home. Some more girl power to this episode. Exactly. But how awkward to be in a category with an ex and a boyfriend because you are wanting to support the other and you want, you know, the best for them. You know, your vote, like pushing for each other to win, but then she took it. That's right. I, mean, I love that. Took it. I love it too, but it's an awkward scenario to be in. No, and then of course the boys, Hayden Summerall, Johnny Orlando, and Jacob Sartorius, mm -hmm. who were all in that category, performed together. Yeah. Katy Perry's California Girls on the stage, and it was 
such a great show. Yeah, I think all California girls, you could hear them screaming. Yes. <laughs> literally within California at Hermosa Beach. I think there was a noise complaint for the amount of girls screaming for Hayden Summer, all Jacob Sartorius, and of course, Johnny Orlando <laughs> while they were singing that. But it was cute. It was definitely cute. And then Choice Music Male, mm -hmm. Shawn Mendes took home the award, and Billie Eilish for yes. Choice Music Female Artist. So yep. Finally an award show in which I recognize every single name. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am all about the Teen Choice Awards. Yes. Well, what a great show. We had a blast watching it. And let us know who you were most yeah. excited to see win this past weekend. And then some other kind of yeah. more sad news we have to announce. Yeah, we do. Unfortunately, Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth have announced that they have split up. The couple, you can remember back to 2009, uh, started dating after the last song, which ten they were years. 10 years ago, dating on and off. Married for about eight months, I believe. Yeah. So married more recently. And yeah, they've uh, announced that they've called it called it quits. I, I don't know if people are surprised by this news or not. Yeah. Or if people think that they may reconcile down the road since they have had this ebb and flow of a relationship for the past 10 years. I mean, it's um, always sad to see two people break up, but you have to remember they did meet and start a relationship very young. And as you grow older, you know, you change as a person. So maybe right. they're growing apart. Um, there's a lot of kind of speculation that that is the cause, that they did start dating so young. Right. That they just kind of and grew into different people. Liam is 29 um, and Miley is 26. And I, I mean, they're in a completely different world. But right. there is a big difference, I'm going to tell you now, as someone that's actually 29, between 26 and 29. Yeah. So I feel like... And I feel like there's a lot of versions we see of Miley Cyrus, right. right? And we all know her song Malibu that ended up, we know now, being about Liam. I feel as though when she's with Liam, there's a version of herself, right? And right. there's a version of herself that we see Miley be with Liam. And then when they split, there's a version of Miley that we also see. Yeah. And I think the thing about a marriage is, and I'm totally speculating here, but like you have to accept all of somebody right. when you like marry that person. And part of me wonders if Liam was down with all of what Miley is because she is like so unique and, right. and I love watching Miley and all of you know the way in which she's developing as a person but she's admitted she said it multiple times like and I think it was Elle magazine she told like I'm not your typical wife right. I don't even want to explain to you our actual relationship because yeah. I don't know if the world's necessarily ready we're in a modern relationship that's different to what you all know of, of being a wife she goes right. I don't even like that word so and it was no secret of course I mean allegedly that Liam's family mm -hmm. you know in the in the days of Miley and Wrecking Ball, right. weren't her biggest fans. So right. maybe that caused some tension. Because if that is that in was fact also true, also about him, right? What I heard too. So you're hearing a song about your son being a wrecking ball in someone's right. life. It's just probably. But hard they seem to, hear. to be in a really great place. But you never ever know, you know, you really what's don't. going on in the relationship. So yeah, well, we hope they figure it out. Um, and of course, Liam escapes to where he knows best, Australia. Oh, exactly. There was a photo of him surfing and kind of, you know. Well, I think you can tell a lot about a person and especially a couple and the way in which they handle their breakup, right? Yeah. So you do have Miley on a different beach, actually, in Italy, right. actually seen right now with Brody Jenner's ex. So the way in which people handle breakups, I think says a lot about maybe where they are going mm -hmm. as a person or maybe how they felt in their relationship. Yeah. Because he's handling it a completely different way than she is. Right. And I think that may actually speak volumes to what's going on. And of course, Liam wrote a statement mm -hmm. on his Instagram that just a quick note to say that Miley and I have recently separated and I wish her nothing but health and happiness going forward. This is a private matter and I have not or will not be making any comments to any journalists or media outlets. Any reported quotes attributed to me are false. Right. Peace and love. Peace and love, Liam. Exactly. Like I said, I think he's more of a private person. Yeah. And she's right now out there being very public, public, posting a lot of photos. So I feel as though in which they handle this is completely different. Right. And I feel like for a marriage to work, sometimes you have to be on the same level in the same way of handling things. And Miley's life just seems to be more public. So yes. I don't know if he was always down for that. Well, we'll have to we see what happens within yeah. that. But um, on to some better and happier news. Yeah, what Dance do we got? Mom. Yes, <laughs> Dance Mom. Season yes. 8 is finally back on Lifetime, and I got the pleasure of sitting down with the next generation of Dance Moms. Uh, I sat down with Gianina. We talked all about what you're going to be seeing in this episode, so go ahead and roll it. Welcome back to Sleep Beat TV. I have been joined by one of the dancers you'll recognize from Season 8 of Lifetime's Dance Moms. Yes. Girl, you are part of the new generation of Dance Moms. Yes. How crazy is it? Very crazy. Right? I never in a million years thought I'd be able to 
work with Abby and Gianna yeah. on Dance Moms, and now that I am, I'm mind blown. Okay, so I gotta ask you, since season eight has premiered, yeah. how has your life changed? Like, what's some of the craziest things that have happened since it aired? Well, it's kind of weird when you're out in public at like a dance convention uh -huh. where like the dance community's there, and you you have to take pictures, and I'm like, I forget, because I'm like, I'm just like a normal kid who right. likes to dance just like you do, but I never thought that I'd be taking pictures with fans because all the fans are so amazing. Right. That's like the best part. Yeah, no, you guys do have some really great fans, I being one of them. <laughs> but did you watch Dance Moms before you were oh, on the yeah. show? Yeah. So what is it like that full circle moment when you were sitting there on the couch just watching as a yeah. viewer and as a fan, right? Yeah. What would you tell that person that was sitting on the couch there watching as a fan now, now that you're actually on the show? What would you tell yourself? I don't know. Like, did you see it coming ever? Well, I know when I was sitting like on the couch watching it, sometimes you'd be yelling at the TV. Yeah. So now I'm really like, you can yell at the TV. <laughs> like you're allowed to yell at right? the TV. Yeah. Do you watch back your episodes? Sometimes, yeah. Okay, are you, are you one of those that watch it back and you're like, oh no, like, that's not my voice, that's not what I sound like. like yeah, you sometimes, sometimes. Critical? Yeah, sometimes in interviews you don't realize what you sound like, and then sometimes you don't realize what you look like. Yeah. You might look like a hot mess after your dance, but You can't look like a hot mess. <laughs> I don't believe it. In the dressing room when you take like your like costume or like uh -huh. your wig off and your hair is like, yeah. You see it then. Yeah, <laughs> that's usually me waking up. Same. Pretty much looks like that. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about some of the OGs from Dance Moms, yeah. right? Because recently, JoJo Siwa came and surprised you guys on the yes, episode. Yes, that was so fun. I I think that was one of my best reactions on the show because yeah. I was so like upset that she couldn't come, but then I was like, she scared me because mm -hmm. I turned around and I didn't see her. And so then I was like frightened and I almost like fell on the floor, but then I was crying so I was so happy to see her. You could tell what she went over awesome. you and was like, oh, yeah. like you're so, so excited. I was so happy. Jojo also said something really funny on your guys' episode though. She goes, it's great to be back because when you're on uh, the show, yeah. you're kind of intimidated by Miss Abby Lee, right? When you, but when you leave and come back, come back you're, you're not scared of her. So what is it like dancing <clears throat> for her? Is it a little bit intimidating, at least at first? I have to say the first week I was like shaking because yeah. I was so nervous I just wanted to please her. Yeah. But then like when the weeks went on you get comfortable with her because she's such a nice person. Yeah. Miss Abby's such a nice person and so when you get to work with her and you get to know her more, she's like more like, she's like your dance mom, like right. for sure. Like, of course we have yeah. dance moms, but yeah. she's like the actual dance mom uh -huh. of like all of us. And so I just, I wasn't as scared because I knew that it's a TV show for and sure. she's doing her she's doing her job. Yeah, she but she does a good job at it. For yes, sure. very good What's job. What's something that may surprise us about Abby Lee? Like she seems really funny. Well one thing I like to say is that when we're on the show, she has a TV personality mm -hmm. where she, you know, is about herself <laughs> yes. and she always looks amazing. Yeah. When we're off the show, she still looks amazing, but yet she always takes the kids out to dinner or to oh, amusement yeah. parks and like she loves to like just be around us without our moms because right. it just makes her feel better. No, I that, guess. No, that you can you can tell it somewhat on air, and you can also tell when people like JoJo Siwa come back to the show mm -hmm. that there's a strong bond there. I want to say though, Abby Lee, we know at the very least we can call her a fighter, right? Yes, she recently for sure. battled and beat cancer. a very rare form of cancer. So what has Miss Abby Lee taught you about kind of fighting and fighting for your dreams? Well, that you can do anything if you put your mind to it, yeah. and she definitely did, and she, she did. definitely did. And I mean, all the kids are so happy for her, and I'm so happy that she had the courage to keep mm -hmm. going because I mean, it's such a great lesson for all the kids. Tell me what it's like, because I, as a viewer, am sitting there like the solos, right? Everyone wants a solo. You guys always want to be at the top of the pyramid. Yeah. So when you're sitting there waiting for the names to be announced, mm -hmm. what's that process like? Well, at first I was like. Come on, come on, Gia, like get the top of the pyramid. And then it's like, you think you're at the top and then you're at the bottom. And you're like, That's okay. True. Then you're like, okay, like what yeah. I, What can I do? But then yeah. it's that weird feeling like, you think you're gonna be at the bottom and then you're at the top. Yep. And I'm like, I don't get why I'm at the top, but awesome. But you gotta it's worth take it, it when you get it, right? Yeah. Now you girls, it's really fun to watch you all because you have such a great dynamic, obviously, on oh, stage. thank you. But dancing in a group of girls too, it's competitive, as we know, we just yeah. talked about the pyramid. What do you girls do to just Keep it positive, because when you're in a group dance, no matter if you're not getting along with someone, you need to look like you're getting along with yeah. someone, right? Yeah, because when you're dancing, you have emotion in your face, mm -hmm. so you get to act. Yep. You also have to just portray your character, good or bad, right. whatever it is. Right. And I think because we've learned over the season, we can't be individual dancers on the mm -hmm. stage. We have to be a team or else we won't win. Right. And so, I mean, there's weeks where the team kind of falls apart. There's weeks where the team is just like a united mm -hmm. team. And I definitely feel like the week coming up is, is a good is a good one. Is a good one? Mm-hmm. 
Wink, wink. That's our little teaser, which means you've got to watch it. Yes. How has being a part of Dance Moms this season brought you closer with your mom? Well, since my mom has been my dance teacher for 28 years, <laughs> well, she's always been like my mom, mm -hmm. but she's never been on the side of like a dance mom. Cause right. she's been like the teacher. So I'm like already like, obviously I'm her kid, okay. but yeah, yeah. she's never been on the side where she's just my mom. And, and to see, back, right? yes. Yeah. So seeing that side of her was like, wow, like I've never done this yeah. before. And so I think her being a dance teacher and then being a mom, mm -hmm. we learn more about each other and That's how like cool. we deal with stress better. Yeah. And it was definitely stressful this season. So yeah. I can't thank my mom enough oh, for being yeah. there the whole season because it was crazy for yeah. her and me. So it's brought you guys closer? Yeah. 100%. I think so. Well, think, I, think, I think we learned a lot more about each other. <laughs> everything you wanted to learn? Yes, everything <laughs> more, I needed and right? wanted. Oh, goodness. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank we you for having me. Any time to continue watching you on Lifetime's Dance Moms Season 8 on Tuesday. It's just so fun to see the kids in which we were interviewing, like the JoJo Siwas yeah. of the world. Graduate. You know, kind of graduate, go back into an episode and hang out with the youngsters. And really, all it does is tell me exactly how old and which I am. <laughs> so. I'm done talking about my age right now. I'm aging out of this. I am a huge Dance Mom fan so as good. a former dancer. So like, I love every season. I'm excited for this yeah. season. And she seems like a sweetheart. Yeah, and I mean, as a former dancer that got kicked out of the dress rehearsal because I forgot the entire dance and my <laughs> beach ball may have fallen into the crowd. I have heard this story it, 36 times. She already told it once earlier. I did, I told it earlier today <laughs> and that's how scarring it was. So for me to do this interview, Really took a lot. No, I'm kidding. It was a great interview. I love the Dance Moms kids. And yes. yeah, make sure you catch the new episode on Lifetime tonight. And some other great interviews. Mm -hmm. Our girl Caitlin Fashe sat down with up and coming singer songwriter Quinn Lewis to talk all about his new single, Hurt, Hurt Me, Me now. now. So take a look at that right now. Welcome back to Sweet Beat TV. I'm Caitlin Fashe, and today I am joined by the extremely talented singer songwriter. Quinn Lewis. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to be here. We're so happy to have you here today. So I want to start from the beginning. Can mm -hmm. we rewind to how you got your start in music? Yeah, um, so I, I just moved to Nashville. I moved for university and was like just figuring out what the music business world was. Um, I was doing music production and uh, music business in school and kind of like everyone was obscenely talented and I was like, yeah. oh no, I'm never going to make it. Everyone's so good. Um, so, but I started songwriting and started working with a bunch of different people and fell in love with that world. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of like this jumpstart introduction to what songwriting was. I didn't know that there was a whole world behind that. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that and um, found a publisher when I was working uh, at a restaurant in Nashville. And oh, awesome. Yeah, things just kind of started falling into place and I got super lucky with the team that I have now. Yeah. And when you were little, did you used to sing around the house, play yeah. guitar? What was that like? Yeah, um, I'm the youngest of three and uh, I've said we're kind of like Von Trapp-ish. We all play something or sing something and like oh, cool. in the car together we're all singing harmonies and stuff. So. Um, I, we were always musical, but I didn't know until like high school that I was like this in love with music and that it was like my thing. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And your sound is like electro pop, right? Definitely some electronic elements in the pop stuff, but um, lately using a lot of organic elements and uh, putting in some newer sounds. Yeah. And I feel like it's super vulnerable. So it's like a good mix. Yeah. It's, di it's different. Not something that you hear often. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it's. Uh, it's easier to write songs for me when they're just super honest and like getting to the point and they help me figure out my own stuff. So yeah. Yeah. And 2019 has been a huge year for you. Yeah. It's going well. And, yeah. You're killing it. Thank you. You got signed with the Rista Records. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. You also went on tour with Kevin Garrett. Yeah. That was your first tour experience, right? Yeah. 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 What was that like? The first experience? I mean, unreal. I remember saying a couple of years ago to my publishers like oh, Kevin Garrett's like that's the goal like he's an idol artist of mine and I'm like big fan now we're like good friends I always like weird him out I think with how <laughs> big of a fan of yeah. I am of his but I mean it was unbelievable yeah it was 21 days 11 shows awesome. um, and just like I fell in love with the road I just want to tour all the time if I can and you have been releasing a lot of music you yep. released Hanging on, mm -hmm. only everything, pushing all my friends away. Yeah. And most recently, what I've had on a replay. Yeah. Hurt me now, I'm such a fan. Thank you. But this song was written two years ago, right? 
Yeah, two years ago in Nashville. Yeah. So, what was the original inspiration of the sound of the song, and how has it changed now? Yeah, I think、um, I was actually thinking about texting someone like. Hey, if we're gonna end this, let's end it. Or if you're gonna hurt me, like hurt me now.、Yeah. And then I, like, as I do a lot of the time, when I thought of that, I was like, okay, put it in my notes.、Um, come back to it later. And I was in the room, and kind of brought up that title. And the other writer, Todd Clark, was just like, you gotta write that. Like,、yeah. we, we have to write that together. And、um, I was like trying to think of things that were creative and like just kind of make a story about it. And he was like, no, dude, what's going on with you? Like, what is this about? And that was like one of the first times I had dove into. A song and been like, yeah, this is everything that's going on with me. And、yeah. for a while, it was like really, really directed at her. And then I was like, okay, we're good. Like it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now it's about a, a whole、Taylor、bunch、Swift、of other stuff. Taylor Swift moment. I'm coming for you. Yeah, yeah. No name drops. No、yeah. name drops in this one. Yeah. But no, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of I wanted to end it.、Yeah. If it was gonna hurt, like might as well get it over, rip the bandaid. Makes、yeah. sense. It's easier that way, right? Yeah, exactly. Than dragging it on forever. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. And your music video for the song came out last week, and it takes place on a bus. Yeah. So, is there significance to the bus? Where you is, did you send your text message like you just said no, on the bus? No. What does the bus mean? I wish that'd be cool. That'd、yeah. be cool. We can start telling people that. But、uh, I thought of that story. I was、yeah. like, it's, that would be pretty genius. No, I, I like that a lot. I'm not. It was basically like trying to paint the picture of. When you're on a bus, you're going somewhere. Like you've got somewhere you got to be. You're gonna get off the bus at some point. Yeah. But the way we shot it, we were like going back and forth from night and day, and like didn't trying to paint this picture of not knowing how much time was passing. Because、mm. when you're in those moments of like, when something's gonna end, time slows down. I feel like, and you're、totally. like, damn, when's this gonna happen?、Mm. Or like, who's gonna like, who's gonna do this? When? Wh- how's this all gonna go down? Yeah. So we wanted to paint a picture of like, we knew where we were going. We knew what was going on, but. It was just taking forever to get there. So, so we've gotten a lot of new music from you in 2019.、Mm-hmm. What can we expect for the rest of 2019? So, lots of new music coming、uh, towards the end of the year, and、uh, hopefully, getting back on the road. And yeah, just trying to play. Well, all of us at Sweetie High will be blasting your music. Cheers. Che- all the time. We already do. <laughs> But thank you so much for coming and hanging with us yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Honestly, it's so so cool. Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys want to see more of Quinn Lewis, you can. Go ahead and follow him on Instagram and stream his new song "Hurt Me Now," and we will catch you guys later. That boy is not hard on the eyes and very talented, so exactly he can hurt someone、me. for now, right? No. <laughs> no. Anyways, don't hurt anyone, but it's, it's gonna be—it's a good song. Yes, congrats on your new single, and we'll have to stay tuned for more. But that's all we have for the show today, unfortunately. I know, Alex. Unfortunately, that is all she wrote, and by she, I mean we. <laughs> yes, but make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. See you Thursday. Bye. Bye.